welcome to another episode of Into the Minds of Madness, the horror movie podcast where we speak about the classics, the brand newbies, the forgotten gems, and everything in between, really. <laughs> Which is really is everything, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm your scaredy cat, Paul McWhorter, and sitting across from me, your horror movie aficionado, mm. Mr. Chris Dicker. Oh, hello there, sir. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm very well. Oh, how are, are you? I'm good. I'm good. We are stuck right in the middle of the sludge of Stephen King month. Yep, yep. It's, I, I could not be happier. We're on the on the downhill part now. Yeah, we're, we're getting we're smack bang in the middle, getting yeah. closer to, uh, I guess, the, the reason for us mm. doing Stephen King month is it is just around the corner. It's not far away. Not, not far, far away. away. So, but today we hit up 1983's... Christine. Christine. And mm. obviously another adaptation as we are going through of Stephen course. King month. A bit weird if we didn't. <laughs> Who directed this? The the legend himself, John Carpenter. So this is a good a good mixture of two people you like a lot, Stephen King and John Carpenter. Yeah, this I didn't realize it was cut in a Carpenter film when I first saw it, and it wasn't until later on. I'm just like, I just saw it in a whole different light. I'm like, oh. That explains a serious tone to a movie about a killer car. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you want to read us the synopsis? Yeah, let's dive in. Let everyone know what's going on. Like, I kind of just said it, it's a killer car. Mm, um, but anyway, let's, let's put it a bit more eloquently. John Carpenter brings Stephen King's best-selling novel to life in this chilling thriller. She was born in Detroit on an automobile assembly line, but she is no ordinary automobile. Deep within her chassis lives an unholy presence. She is Christine, a red and white 1958 Plymouth Fury whose unique standard equipment includes an evil, indestructible vengeance that will destroy anyone in her way. She seduces 17-year-old Arnie Cunningham, played by Keith Gordon, who becomes consumed with passion for a sleek, rounded, chrome-laden body. She demands his complete and unquestioned devotion, and when outsiders seek to interfere, they become the victim of Christine's horrifying wrath. Ooh, man! Doesn't that just put you in the mood to watch this? That is actually that's a much better synopsis than what we've read the last couple of weeks. I think that's the best one we've come across. I think so. I there think was no so. bullshit in that. No, that was straight to the point. And even the the little blurb at the top, it's from Time Magazine. Carpenter's best since Halloween. There we go. Interesting. There we go. Interesting thoughts. All right. So, where do you want to start with this movie? Man, I think we got a good one. Yeah. We got a good one this time. A good one. I we really enjoyed this. We both agree on this. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm so happy because I, as we said in the last episode, I was a little bit worried that it was because I can't, couldn't re- quite remember watching it. Like, oh no, did I build it up in my head? It's going to be really good, and it was good. Yeah, it's a solid film. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Mm. Yeah, I got um, I got some kind of some <laughs> just from the clothes and stuff like that, and some of the um, um, let's call it. Older people trying to <laughs> trying to act as teenagers. Oh, I got like oh. mad Grace vibes. Gee, yeah. Oh, there was a, a good John, John Travolta impersonator yeah. in there. Yeah. God damn, he looked forty. He did, didn't he? Why are you in shop class? Yeah, I know, right? You look like you have a child, man. And uh, that shop class teacher did not take no shit, did he? Nah, did man, not fuck around. Nineteen seventy eight was a different time. Mm. You can put hands on anybody. <laughs> <laughs> No one seemed to give a shit. No, no. <laughs> Especially in Stephen King's 1978. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, don't even get me started on that. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, for a movie that is the premise of an evil car that makes people devoted and obsessed with them and kills anyone who goes against them, this should have been a really silly, dumb movie. Yeah. This should have been dumb. <laughs> yeah. And it just kind of lands. It, it had its moments of dumbness, but yeah. it was like, but it was, it was all too forgivable mm. because of everything, all the other good stuff that happened in it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like everyone seemed solid, like the character wise, like the, all their motivations and their personalities, like no one really rubbed me the wrong way. And when they did, that's because it was supposed to. Yeah. And I think I know exactly which part you're talking about too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly which part you mean. But um, it was a it's a long film for an eighty three horror film, an hour, yeah, hour and fifty ne- minutes. Yeah, nearly two hours, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it was a, it didn't really feel like it dragged, which was nice. It was some moments where it was just like, oh, they could have cut like a minute or something like yeah. that, 
all in all, I, I like the pacing as well. Yeah, I I feel like it kind of took maybe just took a little bit to get going, like yeah, with, and with the just the setting up of the characters and stuff like that. But once it did, it was just like mm. I was just like, holy shit! But like we're getting towards the end, I'm like, oh fuck, that's right. When near the end of this movie, yeah. it just makes sense like that it's coming to an end. But I was just. Yeah, it kind of yeah, it was a little bit slow at the start. Then it just kind of raced to the finish line. Mm. It felt like, yeah, um, it was. I like, speaking with the pacing at the ending. I really liked how it wasn't like it was set through like one week or something like that. It was over yeah. a, a series of months, and we, yeah. we'd see the different time, like a, a date would come up. Yeah, in little different time scenes stamp. And, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing that kind of having it lasting over that long of a period was the only weird thing for me. Oh, yeah. Cause, yeah, because I feel like we just didn't, like, check in with some of the characters and their relationships I, as it went. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, it, it was nice that they were trying to do it. Like, just trying to really make it seem like, yeah, this is happening over a really long period of time. But it did kind of just... I, I forgot about Dennis for a while. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and then he suddenly comes back, yeah. So, who have we... Let's talk about our main characters first. Like, it's kind yeah. of like set up what, who's in this and what's going on and... To um, we've got as I said before, his name, uh, Keith Gordon as Arnie Cunningham. Arnie Cunningham. Oh, oh that's what I was gonna say as well. They got away with a fair few C bombs in this, didn't they? Oh, it's interesting that you state uh, mentioned that. There's a um, this was received like as one of the most foul mouth films of its t- of 1983. Like people just hated it. There's at least six C bombs in there. But it was done on purpose. Because they, um, Carmen wanted to dial back on the gore, like completely. Uh, I'll go into this a little bit later, but this is all from kickback from th- the thing's critical reception, and he was devastated after that. Mm. And um, so and that was one of the main complaints was there's too much gore, too violent, blah blah blah. And what they realized, and they got to the end of the film, the making of it, and they were gonna go into like PG thirteen wasn't a thing anymore, um, yet. So it's gonna become. The, you know, open to kids and stuff like that. So, like, just fill it with swearing. Get, it, get that R- oh, higher rating by filling okay. it with dirty language. Yeah. So, they call him Cuntingham. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was it, his name? Arnie here. Arnie Cunning- Cuntingham. Arnie Cuntingham. Oh, I, I feel like my mum just, like, I could feel her about to, like, whack me around mm. the ear just saying it. <laughs> it was so strange, wasn't it? Mm. It was very weird. So, he was, as we were talking about before, when he dials it up to 11. It oh, feels, man. It feels really weird. Yeah, like... I feel like that's a kind of a, a trend I've noticed with um, King movies. Like, there's always that one character who can just overact, go mm. fucking nuts, and go yeah. the distance. Young Young Arnie was definitely our overactor in this one. Yes, he was, man. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> there was, like, it's weird though. Like, I all I see with him is like American Werewolf in London. I don't know why, but he looks so much like the um, the lead from that. And yeah. He reminds me of somebody I just can't put my finger on. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the movies he's been in. Like, I think he was in Meatballs. I might be wrong with that. <laughs> but I know he was in um, a Rodney Dangerfield film. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. But so this Keith Gordon guy. Yeah, I'm almost certain he played his son. And um, it was, Dangerfield is like a, a usual, an eccentric billionaire. Yeah. And hey, hey, hey. And he goes to college with his son to help him get through it. And I've seen like one scene of it and he... The school's like sport for this one is diving and they get Rodney Dangerfield to fill in and he does a triple backflip somersault by like, or some shit like that. Like he jumps onto three different diving boards, but he's still like oh, 60 at this thing. stage. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> so oh the entire God. time I'm just, as like, I'm trying to take him seriously. I'm just picturing Dangerfield to come out and scream like, like everybody's going to get laid. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And getting but no respect. No yeah. respect at all. Yeah. But I really liked um, Arnie, like the actor, like even though he was corny as shit at times. Yeah. I really yeah. liked him. He was all right. He, he reminds me of um, something out of a teen movie as well mm. from that time. You know? uh, but I thought his progression um, into what he ends up being, he, he handled it pretty well. He didn't ham it up as much as he probably could have. Yeah. I, th- I think that's where I, what I found weird as well, kind of with his character. And at the start, they kind of don't really show his descent they just show him like losing his glasses now he doesn't have his glasses and he's but he's already yeah. acting like a prick that was one you little know? detail i'm like he can just see now because he's got a, a yeah. Plymouth fury yeah but that yeah it's just 
I found that a bit strange. I don't that think they spent it. enough time with like watching him just kind of lose it or like. Yeah, it's true. He like, was just he he wasn't a prick, and then he was. He wasn't a prick. Got the car, then he was a prick. Like straight away, mm. there was nothing. It there was just no went quite middle ground. To like, it. Yeah, it it did happen quite quite quickly, mm. and I think that was during one of those um, time periods that we don't see, like when it cuts oh, to yeah, it, like a month true. or two. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe it, it could have benefited from maybe just a scene of him working on it early on and you know, the radio coming on and him getting his first sign that something is happening with Christine. Yeah, There's something like about you, her. you do see that scene with him sitting, like he's kind of done with fixing it for the day and he kind mm. of like, kind of like nuzzles into the steering wheel kind of thing. Mm. But that's kind of the only thing you see of him like falling for Christine kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it's true. Good point. Like it is very much like, it's instantaneous and just implied. Oh yeah, he's obsessed with the car now. Yeah, yeah, in love. yeah. It's just totally implied. It's mm. just like, oh well, this is how it is. Like, hmm. yeah, which I found a bit strange, but that might have something to do with. Um, uh, there's another like, uh, I actually did research, you guys. <laughs> Holy shit! I did some research too. I read Wikipedia twice. Wait, yeah, <laughs> I watched some videos. Yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> real research. Go on the YouTube's. We're on the front lines. <laughs> but um, getting the scoops. Oh no. Um, the this film was like at the peak of King. Like King was so popular, mm. and this went into um, production before the film book even got published. I was just gonna say that that blows my mind. Well, that would probably explain some detail changes. It I came feel. out in April of eighty three, and the movie came out in December of eighty three. Hmm. So what happened was, um, so one of the producers, Richard Kobritz, was apparently good friends with Stephen King. Uh, and um, King yes. actually gave him the, the manuscripts of both this and Cujo. Cujo, yeah, they yeah. part. Yeah, so that's where it... Because I noticed, because Ryan the Bull, that was only about four years in between the, the, the book and mm. the movie. Dreamcatcher was only two years. Really? Yeah, so like pretty much as soon as the book came out that it would have gone into development. That surprises me. Or around the same time. Mm. And this was in development before the book even came out. No, 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 no like, single... I find that fascinating. Yeah, that that's some, that's some faith in your product right there. Yeah, like oh yeah, hundred percent. This is gonna be great. We don't care. Yeah. So uh, well, twenty bucks says I reckon because it, it was it was um set in seventy eight. Twenty bucks says that's when he f- when he wrote it and he just had like piles of manuscripts sitting there and then just gave it to this producer. Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think this I, he had a lot of um a lot of passion for this story. He, he were, from what I understand, there's a lot of details like um. Every song that we hear in, throughout the film is in the book, mm-hmm. except for the opening song "Bad except as a Bone." For George Thorogood. Yeah, yeah, that one wasn't in there. I probably just needed a pop song for that. But yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, that, another fun fact: it was um, one of the main producers that was sitting down with his um, with his wife, and that song came on TV or whatever it was, and she's like, "That's your movie." <laughs> <laughs> That's how they got George Thorogood. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I was thinking that as we were watching that. I wish I had a list of the all the all the songs that played mm. in it because there are some damn good music cues in this mm. too. There's like um, a couple of Sto- Rolling Stone songs and um. Oh yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Is that Beast of Burden? Yeah, that's Burden, the one. Beast of Burden. Sure. Yeah, yeah. There's some really good fifties music. Yeah. Like good good rock. Yeah. And um, that's that's a, another. If we were playing a Stephen King drinking game, we'd have had a couple of shots by now because there's lots of rock and roll. Yeah. And um. Yeah. He, the man loves his rock and roll. I'm surprised there was no writers in this. Oh, oh maybe that's why. Yeah, there was there no, was no writer, writer in this, man. There was no writer. Oh, that was a nice change. Yeah. Mm. So that, that wasn't Stephen King jerking his little dick off, getting all <laughs> excited and putting himself in a... Little peen. In a story. Yeah. <laughs> Which actually, that's I only just noticed that. And it was yeah, very I didn't strange. even think. It's very strange. For him to do something like that, mm, mm. or to not do something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's not even like he's like the like uh, Arnie studying to be a writer or anything yeah, like that. Like no. he's no, no, he's, just, he's Arnie. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, mm. that's very weird. I yeah, <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I found that now. <laughs> and I, another thing I liked was that it was set in '78. Yeah, it's like it came out '83. It's nice that it's like they put it just a couple of years back. I don't know. Yeah. It's like a a weird detail. It's like now when you see a film like set in the nineties, like or something like that. It's a bit, like, oh, oh yeah. It's a bit jarring, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it's that's the past now. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I just I don't know. It just kind of brought another. It didn't feel like an eighties movie. You know what mm. I mean? Like it didn't. It didn't have the kind of. 
the cheese to it. it yeah. It, it felt very much like, it, almost like a 70s thriller. Yeah. A big, nice mystery to it and all that. And there's no jump scares. Oh, a yeah. time when a jump scare wasn't a thing. Like there was, was hardly there was yeah. I mean, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, there was no jump scare, but there was hardly any blood either. No, again, he he made hardly sure that there was blood. no blood. Yeah, and I feel like that's a good thing to do with horror because like it it changes the film in my like it, yeah. it gets rid of the scares. Like you go into a film like Brain Dead or Bad Taste or something like that. Yeah, you want to see rooms like absolutely covered in blood yeah. <laughs> but it's so impactful when you don't see a drop of blood throughout the whole film and then spoilers uh, arnie's not going to survive yeah he does some pretty awful shit in this movie <laughs> or crit does it is is it christine yeah doing it? that's or, the other thing you don't know the whole way do you but when you see him with the shard of glass in his chest and he's dying perfect that's exactly what you need to see you need to see because it's quite horrifying mm. he, this noises he makes and the, the action he does and the way he grabs lee mm. as well as he like kind of leaps out the window yeah it just makes that whole it was like we we're building up to the one shot with blood in it yeah yeah <laughs> and we got a nice payoff i felt yeah yeah if it if the, we had seen like everyone get killed and ripped in half and you know bits going everywhere that's when i think it would have it landed in ser- silly territory yeah yeah it would have gone like, oh okay I'm not taking this seriously anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think that's one other thing that I found strange in the beginning mm. of the movie is, um, so there's Lee, who's like the new girl in school. Fucking Lee. And they're just like, and they're like all frothing over. Mm. Her. They're losing their shit. Yeah. And then, but then there's the other girl. Yeah. The, the blonde, blonde one. Roseanne, her name is. Is her name Roseanne? Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure if. That's not a pretty name. I'm not sure whereabouts in the movie it was, <laughs> um, but I, I, I glean that bit. And yeah, but that just that whole relationship was just really weird at the start. Like it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and fun fact: that girl Roseanne is actually Kelly Preston, soon to be Mrs. John Travolta. Get out of town. Yeah. Yeah. That's freaky. Soon to be Scientologist <laughs> Kelly Preston. Do you think she she was maybe like dating like Buddy or Billy, whatever that character's name is? The guy that looks like Travolta. Oh, that look like Travolta. And they kind of like she just never <laughs> never left her. <laughs> left an impact. <laughs> <laughs> but the film really weird. Is it just me or did Lee look like she was always ready to play a game of golf? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, with those shorts and the long socks. And, and the vest, like the checkered vest. Yeah. Weird taste of clothes, lady. Yeah. Even for 78, weird taste of clothes. <laughs> those pleated shorts. Oh, yeah, yeah. what the hell? A really <laughs> weird choice of clothing. <laughs> um, is there anything that like, stood out for you? Um, i got to admit, like... um. Yeah, I just kind of wrote down like, um, oh, that's right. So when the three kind of bullies mm. go to um, smash up Christine, oh yeah, smash up the car. So the car's sitting in the garage, um, like you know the the chop shop, pretty mm-hmm. much the mechanics. Darnell's do, do it yourself garage. Yeah, Darnell's do it yourself garage, um, and they go into just to smash up the car. Mm. There's two things. So one thing is he takes off his leather jacket and throws it and it Perfect. lands so perfectly. It was lovely. Like, oh, on, the, on, on a nail or whatever. Yeah. It's just, In his mind, he's just like, fuck you. Yeah. Oh my God. Even John Carpenter behind the camera would have been like, fucking yeah. No, hold on. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Because that shot's still going for a while. Hold it. Hold <laughs> keep it. Keep it going. Keep it going. Because that was so fucking good. Yeah, like, that was nailed. It would not surprise me if that was first try. Like... That was impressive. Mm. That was fucking impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second part is when they do start smashing up Christine, he jumps on the roof. Mm. He puts the first hammer throw into the windshield mm. and then everybody else starts at it. He jumps off the roof onto the bonnet <laughs> of the car <laughs> and nearly slips and fucking nearly oh. dies. <laughs> like <laughs> you know, fun, another fun fact, Christine fun fact. Every single one of those people in that scene got hurt during that scene. Oh, really? Um, he almost stacked it. Like that was genuine. He almost he, ate shit for real. And if he if he fell, he would have eaten the oh, biggest shit. He, he probably would have damn near snapped his neck. Yeah, like, easily. Yeah, uh, he got fucked up with glass from the windshield. Oh, um, just like popping up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The dude, um, Tubby, 
um, who was attacking oh, the, boy. Yeah, yeah, with a knife in the chair, he cut his hand right open. Oh, yep, yeah. And all the other ones just from debris and glass, yeah. they just got fucked up in that whole scene. Jesus so, Christ. Yeah. Safety has uh, changed a bit. Yeah. It's often probably why you don't see people usually attack a real car. <laughs> yeah, not a priority. Not uh, that, a priority. It truly surprised me, but not because... Mainly because it doesn't surprise me because it's a carpenter film for that kind of detail. But to actually put real glass in the windshield. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even you could see the way that the windshield um, broke down as mm. it was smashing it. It's like, yeah, that's why we have that new type of glass now. Yeah, we have breakaway glass. Yeah, just shit. the way that it, uh, that's, of course, breakaway glass. I just, I just couldn't pull it as yeah. I was talking. I was just, uh, that's right, breakaway glass. Yeah, but it makes total sense because the way that was shattering, you oh, wouldn't want to fucking put your arm shards. through that. You would not want to put your arm through that. Oh, terrifying. As much as those beautiful old cars, cars are, like Camaros mm. and all that, they're fucking death traps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just, coffins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, when he gets when he gets run over, oh. so that moment when he, when he drives into the gas station and Christine can, just oh, like... Can we just have a moment for that scene? Because that oh. was probably the best scene in yep. the movie. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's just go through it because like from a... Visually, it's an outstanding scene, and technically, oh my god, one of the most ballsy scenes I've ever heard of. Like, Christine's out for revenge. Yeah, well, the, and this the, this the first of two times that we see Christine smash into the side of another car and just get latched onto it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, a couple of times. Uh, we're looking at the 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 main screen, a picture of Christine. I don't see anything like horns or anything like that. Like, you know, some cars have a little yeah. spikes on the front. It's, fuck. It she just hit. holds on to other cards. Oh, yeah. Eats <laughs> other cards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just grabs them in in, in her jaws. Yeah. <laughs> so like, as we've, we've spoken about this, as another, take a shot if you're playing the Stephen King drinking game. There's some bullies in this. Yeah. Who are picking on Arnie. Some greases. Greases. Hey, hey. <laughs> my name's Buddy. I've got my fat friend. I've got my weird... Like, weird afro dude yeah who he looks, has a strange afro he looks like he's on the smack like he yeah he was freaking out I just a little thought bit everything was funny as well what oh yeah like when, when they're getting chased by christine he turns around and he like just gives him the burn and just goes asshole Eww. and turns back around and looks at the main bully and he's just like <laughs> yeah right and the main bully's like right get it grow up motherfucker yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> but yeah, they've got it out for cunningham they they don't like him for Bully reasons, yeah, for, <laughs> yeah, for because bullies, because bullies, yeah, and um, throughout the movie they fuck with him and all that sort of stuff, and he gets his back. We're not gonna bog down, not gonna go into too much detail because there's a lot of there's a lot of detail, yeah. Um, but anyway, he. Long story short, Arnie gets. Is it Buddy or Billy? It's Buddy, isn't it? I'm not sure actually, because they sure. they called him Buddy a couple of times, like the teacher when there was like. Pulling up against the wall and shit like oh, that. Oh yeah, I think it's Buddy. Yeah. Anyway, Travolta um, gets kicked out of school. <laughs> yeah. And um, they finally get revenge, and they go to Darnell's when Arnie's not there, and they destroy destroy Christine, as we said. And Arnie's devastated by this, and that's when we see that Christine is supernatural i guess yeah like yeah self-repairing mm, that was a cool scene as well yeah, yeah. i, I like that actually like when um when he, he kind of turns around and then part of her engine gets put back together mm. and he's like oh and he yeah. walks off and then he just goes okay and i was like show me yeah and but i was when he said okay like hung in the air for so long mm. i was like is that is that line just going to is that just going to be the be the end? Are we going to get like a, show me? And I was like, oh, thank God. Are we going to get a love scene? Yeah, it just, it just hung in the air just that little bit too mm. long for me. <laughs> just the anticipation <laughs> was burning. <laughs> but it was cool, like how like and then watching watching it self repair mm. was that was fucking cool. That looked really good. That was amazing. Like, um, I know we're getting off track from the awesome petrol station scene, oh, but yeah. <laughs> that uh, like another technically a really cool scene. Like, yeah. um, that was added. Because Carmen, I didn't feel like because it was just I was going to end like you said on Show Me, and that was that was the end of it. That whole scene, and after watching it, after it was all edited, he's like, "There's something missing. Something's missing from this scene." They figured out a way that they they shot the scene, shot the car getting pulled. It had hydraulic pumps yeah. um, set up in it, and it all pulled it in, and it sucked the whole car up. And he filmed it with the camera. It was either backed upside down, and so then when he put it 
to process it, he flipped it over and it went. It was like poor man's reverse. Oh yeah, okay. Reverse yeah. film. Yeah. And so yeah, they quickly whipped that up and they're like, whoa, <laughs> we did something that cool. Looked put that really in there. Good. That mm. looked really good. They oh, did well there. Outstanding. Like mm. all the repairing scenes and just the carnage in it, really good. Yeah. Yeah. But this petrol station scene. Yeah. This is the first like really like. This is the really biggest piece of action in the film. Yeah. Like, so this is after. So this is after the bullies destroy like destroy Christine. She they've gotten away herself. with it for like a month or yeah, two. Yeah, and then. Christine goes after Fat Boy, mm. um, Moochie. Oh, that's or Mushi. Yeah, thinking of like Poochie or something. Yeah, shit. yeah, and and his is pretty. He just gets he just gets smashed up against a wall. Jump on the fucking hood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a car. It can't yeah, jump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Christine goes after the rest of the bullies. Mm. So I, I forgot about that. That she could just wiped him out in one yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah, well, there were four of them, and she wiped out one first, mm-hmm. and the next three in one go. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> and so cool because it starts with um, Billy and uh, Travolta and Ratface, um, yeah, picking up some booze and then driving home, and then realizing that they're getting tailed, and um, after some you know some road rage games and you know reversing and tailing each other constantly, they kind of real think like that's got to be Cunningham, but it can't be. We destroyed his car and all that sort of you know, doubting yourself stuff. And um, they get back to the, um, one of the other mates. He, I guess he works at the he, petrol yeah, station. Yeah, he was like, he, he was, he was also there in the destroying the, destroying yeah, he's like Christine. the one thug that doesn't get a line in the movie. I'm yeah, pretty sure. yeah. Cause fat boy gets killed by himself. Mm. Weird Afro guys in the car with him just before that. And then mm. they go to his gas station. They don't even say or anything. Where he, where he ever, wherever he's worked. Yeah. yeah he t- the only, th- actually pretty sure the only vocal thing he does is goes, Woohoo! Yeah, when they're in the garage, couple about to of destroy Christine. Mm. Yeah, that's it. And then a scream mm. here just before he gets fucking annihilated. <laughs> so cool! Like, so like they're out out the front now. They've all pulled. They pulled up, and um, uh, Christine hasn't turned up yet. And you know, Travolta's been all tough. He's got a pipe in his hand. He's like, "Come on, bring it, bring it." And Christine's like, "Yeah, fuck you, buddy. I'll get to you." Yeah. <laughs> and rams into his car and just fucking the first of many of biting into it yeah, and pulling yeah. it around fuck that was so cool yeah like and then pretty much throws the car yeah kind of like reverses and just kind of throws it mm. into the into the gas station oh a little bit and then it reverses up hits it again Re- yes yeah, hits it. rat face that's what kills off rat face yeah, yeah. rat face is now being plowed and christine's gone straight hit the car use that car to plow through the petrol station wall yeah and just nail rat face against the back end of it destroys him oh it fucking destroys him <laughs> um and that just sets off a um, bunch of uh the petrol tank in the car and a couple of starts other leaking yeah. and then that's when a gas station attendant bully we need, we need a nickname. he's just like weedy we- weedy weedy red Lanky. yeah weedy red yeah he uh, just gets so he notices that the petrol coming he's like Ah, oh, and shit. then just boom, mm. just goes up. I really like that. They didn't hold on it. There was no no suspense. It's like bang, no, that's yeah. what happens. Yeah, and then <laughs> it's, it's Buddy or whatever his name is. He's the only one left. Yeah, he's just that. outside the petrol station, mm. and Christine's nowhere to be seen. Because yeah, she's she's been engulfed she's in the flame inside it, and then you just see a reverse out. Oh, fuck! What a money shot. Who would have thought that would have been so cool but that was so cool just christine engulfed in flames and just pulls out car engine screaming yeah oh man and buddy pisses himself (laughs) yeah and just bolts (laughs) bolts and she fucking drives straight over through the um petrol yeah through through the bowsers yeah the bowsers sets that on fire the whole station explodes but goes up yeah Fucking eat your heart out, Michael Bay. That's yeah. how you do an explosion. That, and that was a beautiful looking explosion. Too. That was Robocop level. Like, yeah. that was so good. <laughs> they did that very well. <laughs> it just, yeah, it didn't look like it. You could tell it wasn't a model. They just blew up a petrol station. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then. And then just goes hell, hell for leather after Buddy and just. It's still on fire. Splats, on, like, him, on the, splats him on the highway. Yeah, <laughs> I really like that. Like, yeah. It was that long stretch of dark highway. highway usual victim not thinking to hey i'll get out of the way of the yeah, car get, get off, off the, the road. road but no and she's still on fire runs over him and sets him on fire as yep. he's being run over yep ah so well done so good so good so that's all the bullies wiped off the map they're gone yep and this is kind of like when it, it stops being like 
her Christine trying to get revenge for Arnie. Yeah. It's now like, all right, Arnie, you're mine. Now it's me and Arnie be out, be mm-hmm. alone. <laughs> Do the one on one. Yeah. <laughs> but do, I really liked how they handled that kind of transition. Did you notice he started saying things like the guy who sold him the car's brother? Yeah. So yeah. saying shitter, all the shitters of the world. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And um, he does the the line that the guy who sold him the car, like, um, what was it? Greatest smell on earth uh, aside from pussy. Oh yeah, and then Arnie says it right near the like yeah. the end of there, and I really like that. It kind of another like, because again in Stephen King fashion, it's unexplained. As in reusing the line, not yeah. the line itself. <laughs> no, 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 no. The line You're... itself is just it's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Every book. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, it's usually it's an unexplained thing. It's an unexplained entity. Its reasons are, you know, a mystery to us. And that's another one of like. We know that he killed himself in the car in the end, but it's like, is his brother's spirit in there? Like, who, what is this actual presence in Christine? Yeah, yeah. I like that. And it's a thing, another carpenter trait. He likes to, he really likes to leave it up to your imagination. He wants you to figure it out. And, um, mm. yeah, so there's not really like, oh, the car's haunted. Oh, well, it's haunted by this. Yeah. Or is it like just, is it just a car? It's like, is the car haunted? Is is there just something weird about the car? Yeah. Like is he, it, yeah, is it haunted by this specific guy? Or he, he approached that in two different ways. Like, one was the opening scene of you seeing her getting rolled off the um, yeah, assembly off the line. Yeah, production line, yeah. And yeah. that was done to show, kind of answer my question. Like, no, nothing kind of set her off. She's always been evil. Mm. She is just an evil car for some reason. And then it was also in the scenes, like we just spoke about with the petrol station, um, the windshield, all the window is blacked out. Yeah. That was so we wouldn't know who was driving. Like, yeah. So we'd figure out, oh, is it Christine or is it Arnie doing it? Yeah. Which is what I like because they don't they don't tell you anything about when you see Christine just r- randomly mm. driving around with the, like, unless you're very well aware that Al- that Arnie's in the car. Mm. I keep wanting to call him Alan for some reason. I keep going to call him um, Archie. <laughs> Or Richie, Richie Cunningham, <laughs> um, and um, but then in the last scene, you got no idea until it literally just shows you a shot of Arnie in the car. And you're like, mm. oh shit, Arnie's in there. Yeah, no, I, I, really, I, I really liked how they and, handled and that. And there are other moments when it's just like, oh no, I was, I had the other car like mm. with, with his boss, and, even and it's, then, and like it's you... very obvious that Arnie's not supposed to have the car because mm. even the boss knew that he was taking out the the caddy. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, and um. Speaking of that, like the the blacked out windows, as I just said before, like it was that petrol station scene is also technically amazing, and any scene with Christine attacking is amazing because the stunt driver was blind, like he could not see out oh, those yeah, windows course. at all. Yeah. So he's driving a 1958 working Plymouth Fury on fire without any vision. Yeah. God damn, man, you did a good job. Yeah, like, that was great. That was insane. That's some balls. Yeah. To be able to <laughs> yeah. Christ. Well, on that note, apparently they had about like nearly thirty cars mm, in I use. Do have that? There and was seventeen working Christines. Seventeen working ones. working Christines. Yeah. Well, then and then they had um two di- two other makes makes and models of a of another car that kind of looks similar. Yeah, they, they, they Frankensteined well. them up and yeah, the Frey Frankenstein. That, yeah, it said like up to thirty cars were yeah. used. Like, but so seventeen working ones. They had seventeen working Christines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like doesn't mean like there was only. A handful that were like full interior and all that. So most of yeah. them were just like a racing seat, and yeah, yeah, blacked out windows and stuff. Like yeah, the one in the um the alley that kills um, what was his name again? Moffy? Oh, Mushi, Mushi, Mushi. That whole front end was rubber. The, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's why it crumpled up so well. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, there's only two surviving Christines left. Oh wow. Mm. One was um, one's in the studio a lot, and one was offered to Carpenter. But uh, oh, really? he turned it down because he felt like he wasn't going to... He said, yeah, I, I love it. I don't have the space for this thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm never going to drive it. <laughs> um, and they gave it away in a competition. So some dude won it and he sold it, I think, in like... It was like 2008. I, I didn't write it down. Uh, $125,000 or Fuck. something like that. And there was one more. And I believe it was the car used in that alley scene mm. that um, uh, it says one other living Christine. And... Um, <laughs> It was bought off the studio a lot. It was out like Christine in the film, was out just in disrepair, you know, sitting in one of the back lots and dude bought it off, I can't remember who made this film, but um, bought it for 900 bucks and he pulled a full Arnie and re- completely restored it. 
Oh, he, wow. He's on the car show um, the circuit. He's always visiting yeah. people and stuff like that. And like, that's cool. Like, that's awesome. There's a, there's a real Arnie Cunningham out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking great. I really like that. Mm. Um, yeah, there's just a, a lot of... It's just done well. Mm. If This feels... This is a Carbon film. Like, this is a really solid... If you can't tell, I really like his work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, this is my first introduction to Carpenter. Yeah. Now, so. And I was a little bit worried. I'm like, oh no, am I going to introduce you to a, a great with a, a, one of his flops? But no, nah, no, nah, this was this was good. This is good. I thoroughly enjoyed mm-hmm. this. And I'm like, the thing we spoke, about, we were having a little chat about Carpenter before, and the thing is outstanding. And that was a film. Was the reason he made this was because of how badly it was received with critics. Yeah, that was his passion project. That was his baby. Yeah, and people just panned it. It's not till now it gets the right, you know, yeah. the respect. It's, it's, a, it's achieved cult status. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. It's even a, it's surpassed it and got a shitty prequel sequel. It's, it's done <laughs> <Yeah>. its thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this just felt like um. When you can tell when a Carmen is really behind the idea, you can really it, it shows, and mm. it's like um, Assault and Precinct Thirteen. And that's his first film, and well, no, sorry, his first film was Dark Star, but it, it doesn't get much better than Assault and Precinct Thirteen. Like that's probably oh, I can't. I'm just all I can say is oh, it's just <laughs> such a good movie. It's one of the movies like I have to stop myself from watching. If I go into my list of things and it's like, oh, ooh, I can watch Assault and Precinct th- Thirteen again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they, they're just this movie definitely proved that. Yep, I'm still a, a Carpenter fan, and he yeah. can turn pretty much any kind of silly thing into something amazing. Like, mm. Original thing was 1950 something. Yeah. Um, yeah, to turn like a wacky sci-fi film into the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did. I about to say he does no wrong, but he's done some wrong. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen Ghost from Mars? Um, uh, Ghost of Mars? No. Oh, man. <laughs> that is a bad movie. That bad? Okay. They're on Mars, as yep. the title. So, to breathe on Mars, because there's no at- atmosphere, they put on their breathing goggles. Mm. They're just prote- safety protection goggles, and, ah, oh, I can breathe again. Oh, ice cubes in it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> the oh. dad from Lizzie McGuire is in it. Oh. There's a, there's a Mars train. It's fan- oh, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, yeah, he's not he's not all good. <laughs> he's not untouchable. <laughs> no. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but where do you rank this oh, from yeah. our last ones? This is, uh, is it number one at the moment. Number one? This was just... I I needed to watch this movie. Yeah. It felt like a cl- palate cleanser. Like yeah. I've watched so much modern stuff lately, and just some bad stuff as well. And yeah. Like, ah, this was just nice. It was. We said it before. We were trying to critique it and like analyze it, and it's like you can't. It's mm. just a really simple, well put together. Yeah, film. it's just very straightforward. You There's, don't get, um, Yeah, it's not like um, like Dreamcatcher kind of bogged you down a little bit yeah. with information. Yeah. This is just like. This is, watch what's happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a romp. A romp. A good old romp. <laughs> is it number one for you? It's number one for me mm. for sure. Is, it, is our order still um, Christine, uh, Dreamcatcher, fourteen oh eight, ride the bullet? Bingo. Yeah, ride the bullet. Like mm. number seven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man. Like, well, I'm. Well, that's good. Well, it, it's interesting mm. that our 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 films are on the same. They have the yeah. same ranking as well. And we don't, it's not like we're just agreeing with each other because we have a podcast together. Like, no, no. <laughs> I'm still debating I'm actu- whether I'm actually surprised should... by that, mm. by how, how how similar our rankings are yeah. so far. <laughs> well, who knows? It could all change. Mm. Yeah. Well, th- I think the next one is going to be the decider. This is going to be the one that will divide us. I think. Yeah. Three hours of a TV miniseries. Like, yes. I'm going to love every second of it. Others, I've been watching some reviews of it lately. Like, yeah. You know, I'm a nostalgia critic and stuff like that. And people hate it. So and people love it. The 19, It's 1990. 1990. It? 1990. It. I was born when this movie, like the same year this movie came yeah. out. Like, it, uh, yeah. Oh, well, I can't. I'll stop myself. There's so I'm much excited. to talk about. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. What? Did you, um, have you read Christine at all? No, I haven't. No. Yeah. I've read like the movie the first chapter. Like I remember bits and pieces. 
but um, I noticed it's relatively lean compared to most of his other books. Yes, <laughs> it's quite very lean. lean. <laughs> but um, no, Christine's massive. Is it? It's like that thick. It's like it level. Oh really? Yeah, it's a it's a fat oh, book. Oh okay, okay. Sorry, I thought you were talking about like how they pulled this up. Yeah, it was maybe I was reading. Tape. Maybe I was maybe I was reading about something else. Maybe oh, it's probably from a, another killer comic um book uh, from a Plymouth uh fifty eight or something like that. There's another one, Buick ninety eight, I think it is. Um, but there's a couple of little things I um, found out that they changed from the book, but they stuck really true to the story from mm. what I understand. The ending, uh, where it's the what was that? A bulldozer or whatever it be that took on Christine and another really cool carnage scene. Mm. It was just like pinning it in the back as it's yeah. still trying to go f- to get Lee and rip open the head. Oh yeah, cool shit. But in the book, another one of King's just weird little details was it was a pink truck named Petunia that took down Christine because <laughs> he wanted two powerful ladies duking it out. Okay. <laughs> that would have been a really... I don't know if I wanted to see that, but I kind of, yeah. like, this isn't a Watchmen moment when I want to see my giant, you know, crazy alien <laughs> in Manhattan. I don't think I wanted would have wanted to see a yeah. giant pink truck. Yeah. How would that fight have worked? Yeah, that would have been strange. That would, no, that would, that would have been really weird. Um, and yeah, um, apart from that, they really didn't change that much. I think they changed it. um the, I don't, the bit with um, the setup, uh, like, scenes at the high school before um they get the car and all that sort of stuff i don't think that really happened or it was a lot quicker in the book it okay. was, was kind of in the first chapter he buys christine it's okay. very quick yeah um but yeah apart from that from what i understand it. this is probably one of the most um what would you call it it sticks to the source material as yeah. much as possible yeah. just good because this didn't it didn't feel like a stephen king film but like I didn't feel like lost. Like in like some of the, we were kind of speaking about that before. It kind of just these characters that don't really do anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're just kind yeah. of there. Like just they're just chewing the scenery. Yeah, and this yeah. was just very lean cast. Very, yeah. da, 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 da. very no nice was, and simple. Mm. But um, yeah, that's it. I think that's it, eh? I got one final fun fact to leave us on. Yeah. Do you know who turned down the lead in this? No idea. Michael J. Fox, Kevin Bacon. Oh, actually, he, yeah, I did notice something about that. He was, and he, he didn't do it because of Footloose or something. Yeah, he, yeah. he he had accepted it. He was very keen to do it, but then and he then got Footloose, Footloose came, came up along. And he was like, "I've got to do it." He yeah. was very apologetic. He was quite very sad, from what I understand, that he had to turn down Christine because he wanted to work with Carpenter. So he would have been Arnie's character. Yeah, he would have been playing okay. Arnie because mm. he kind of. When I think about it, he actually looks more like Dennis. But it's funny because it's Reminds before more of Dennis. Yeah, it's like it's we wouldn't have had the Kevin Bacon we had yeah. now if he'd done this. Like, because that was Footloose is the one that starts. You know, he's the tough, yeah. tough, handsome, you know, road yeah. cut kid. And yeah, interesting. It would yeah. be a very different timeline. Yeah, that would have been strange. I don't know if I don't think this film would have been good with oh, Kevin Bacon Kevin in it. Bacon. I don't think I I needed the awkward Arnie. I th- I think Kevin Bacon is pretty good at oh he would be off good the, the maniacal stuff. Yeah, that's don't. Yeah, I don't know. Because yeah. he does it. He does it in Hollow Man actually quite well. Mm. The kind of mad, oh, mad smart guy kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah. I'm still not sure if I liked that movie. Like I liked it, but there's some scenes in it were just like, oh god. Really? Yeah, I have some weird feelings about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, maybe we'll cover it. Yeah, I don't actually. No, I actually <laughs> wouldn't mind covering that because it it is a movie that I saw when I was relatively young too, and it uh, uh, weirded me out. It's funny you say that because. I was we're in the studio <laughs> yep. at the moment. I was putting up some of my um, DVDs that I bought recently. I found Hollow Man Two. And even a, is a Hollow Man Two a sequel? Yeah, it looks bad. Like okay. even like the the um, <clears throat> the font looks like something out of um, Lawnmower Man or something oh, like that. Maybe we should do that then. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll t- okay. Who knows? Uh, we might we'll think about it. We'll think like, about it. I can know that's the only two Kevin Bacon horror roles I can think of is Hollow yeah. Man and Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, let's leave it there. So that was that was Christine from nineteen eighty three. Oh, that was so good. That was a damn good one. Mm. That was a damn good one. It was a nice return to good film. Yeah, a good way to to not wrap up Stephen King month, but to ramp up into mm. our couple of weeks of it. Mm. 
the two weeks of it. Man, I can't believe how close the remake is, and I've got to sit in the fucking cinema and watch this movie. I'm going to be terrified. Dude, how do you think <laughs> I feel? I don't want to just watch in the movies either. Oh, <laughs> I'm God. Such a, I'm so scared. I'm a bitch I'm when so it comes scared. to the movies. I'm like, so scared. <laughs> I'm just like, it's too loud. Turn yeah. it down. I'm going to be terrified. I'm going to be terrified. <laughs> God, like I saw, like I went on a date to The Conjuring, and I there was no second date because yeah. I had popcorn <laughs> in front of my face, and I was she was laughing. Oh, God. oh that's great! That's <laughs> awesome. That is so good. <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap it up there. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We mm. really appreciate it. Thanks as always to Gay Paris for theme songs. Yes, for theme songs. For theme songs. Um, uh, and we. Uh, mm. <laughs> I just, I just totally like ran out of like, <laughs> just ran out of steam. my engine just sputtered, if you will. <laughs> I just completely ran out of steam right then, right that second. <laughs> All right. So if you want to hit us up, like us on Facebook, that's probably the easiest way to talk to us mm. or email us, itmompod, itmompod at gmail.com. Ooh. Hit us up and um, let us know what you what, what you reckon we should cover after we're done with Stephen King. Mm. See yeah, if any, see if there's anything that you're thinking of that you really wanna really want us to watch. Yeah, we've been getting some good ones recently, mm. but um, keep them coming. Try and stop me. Uh, keep I, them I want I want you to I want to be surprised. I want to be. What was someone? Um, I haven't got my hands on it yet, but someone suggested uh, it was the nail gun massacre or something oh yeah yeah i hadn't heard of that, him like yeah. oh wow yeah. there's a dude with a nail gun who kills people whilst wearing a black motorcycle helmet yeah where's this movie been <laughs> 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 all right yeah so keep coming we'll um we'll look through them once we're done with stephen king month and see which ones we might put on the schedule mm -hmm. and to those who recommended who chose <clears throat> christine of a creep show did we do it right did yeah. you enjoy a little review of it and I, I mean, I've never seen Creepshow, but I'm really happy that they said Christine because I'm so glad we watched this. Yeah, Creepshow is fun, but this was better. This yeah. Is, this is a my... Yeah. I'm happy we did this one. I'm happy we did this one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't oh. think we needed to talk about um, Stephen King's performance in Creepshow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next week for It of 1990. Oh, look at this. Float with Tim Curry. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited. This is exciting. All right, we'll catch you next week. Rest in horror, Georgie. Rest in horror. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you soon.